So, was this before the Chinese got a good foothold on the underground? And why are there fruit baskets everywhere? I'm Jackie. JCBD merely got used to being in the stickers. I was born in them. I'm Gary Daniels. Ring, ring. It's for you, Gary. It's the director. He says try acting here and there. I'm Justin, and this is White Tiger on Stinker Madness. Hello, and welcome to Stinker Madness. This week on the podcast, it's Sam, Jackie, and Justin, the original lineup, uh, here to discuss a uh, direct TV, a uh, direct video stinker from Gary Daniels in 1995 called White Tiger. Currently streaming for free on Tubi TV. You can also rent it without ads on Amazon Prime for $1. Uh, go to Sam. What's the story that you can uh, dig into with White Tiger? Well, White Tiger was originally called Tiger Storm. It was shot in Hong Kong. It Is ran- that like Sharknado? No. It was probably <laughs> just Gary, <laughs> Gary Daniels kicking people in the face. Oh, no. Everybody bear down. We got a sheltered place. It's a tiger storm. And it stars uh, um, our favorite guy, Gerard Butler, of course. Gerard Butler, Gary Daniels, Nicolas Cage, and uh, uh, Abby Cornish. Tori Spelling. You have to get somebody Tori from Sp- oh, 90210 yeah. if you're going to make a shit movie like that. I like it. I would also like to say that there were no tigers in this movie. They were too embarrassed to uh, be bothered. Nor was he even referenced as being the white tiger. Right. I mean, there was a couple times where I saw people doing tiger claws. Maybe that was as close as we could get. I think that was a commercial. Tiger claws? Did you get the one with the people that were behaving like their pets? Yeah, right. I think that's what you're thinking about was that lady (laughs) in the scratching post. (laughs) All right. All right. So Tiger Storm. So... There was a movie called Tiger Storm. They ran out of money. Uh, The production was bought, and they're like, we'll just finish it. And they looked at all of it, and they went, nope. We're just (laughs) going to scrap that whole thing, call this White Tiger. The only thing they kept was Gary Daniels, and they brought him to Canada. This was shot in Vancouver. So was Tiger Storm close to being done at all? It was mostly shot. Okay, so maybe we could see like a like a future draft house release because that sounds like if they looked at it and were like nope, and then made this and were like yeah, I'm much more interested in Tiger Storm. It could be so bad that it was just unusable footage. Yeah, maybe, but uh, I'd like to I'd like to see a little bit more of that in the future. I would like to know who did their location scouting because that person has uh, the right eye. For the dumpiest, shittiest places in town. That was, uh, their their location scout was the government of Canada that said, here, we'll give you money to make your film in Vancouver, as every time it happens in Vancouver. Yeah. <laughs> Talked about this last episode, that studio. And there's some dumpy spots in Vancouver. That's just the size of it. Mm-hmm. So, they made this, the director, one... Richard Martin, who you will know as a director of one episode of Da Vinci's Inquest. Oh, yes, of course. That so one episode. I love that. That's one. where this is at, is this guy only did one episode of Da Vinci's Inquest. So he's <laughs> nobody in the Canadian right. Idols, right? <laughs> okay. Because that show had like 10 seasons or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's pretty much what there is on this movie. I mean, the more... Interesting things are that uh, it recycled a large portion of Rambo 2's cast. Okay, like who? Julia Nixon, the female assassin, is what main okay. expendable Rambo. Right? Yeah, you're yeah. right. Okay, I didn't put that together. The uh, detective, George Chun, that he, be- I guess, is evil. We're going to have to talk about that when we get there. He's the mm-hmm. guy that gets dr- blown up by an arrowhead he that's actually is. a drill bit. Oh my god, holy cow. And then the head of the, I guess, not triad, or uh, Yakuza, I, I, I wrote down, what we'll get to that when, they, when we get there, whatever the name of this criminal organization is. The one that wants uh, Kerry Tagawa dead is one of the nasty sergeants that I think kicks him in the face and captures him. Okay, 
Okay. All right. Interesting. So, yeah, there are that many people from Rambo 2 in this movie. So, Sam, were you able to find any information on the ponytail slash braiding of bad guy hair? Because one bad guy in particular had some sweet hair, right? He had a, like a killer ponytail in the first shot we see him. And then he has these two braids that go down on either side of him. And then we've got our main bad guy who has a really crap braided ponytail. Yeah, that guy that you've seen in a lot of other martial arts film that's pretty muscular is Ron Juan. Ron Juan. Yeah, and they were like... Related uh, cousin of Don Juan. No, they said, you know Don Juan, and he's like, I'm not. <laughs> so he got really good at kicking people in the face. That 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 is that guy's biography. <laughs> it is not. He's just a stuntman martial arts guy that's in a shitload of movies. Best friends with Captain Ron. He's probably been in more than a few with Kerry Tagawa, who's been in a shitload of movies. Kerry's still working. Is he? Yeah. Okay, he can't be a spring chicken. No. I think if you want to do some fun things, just look up images of uh, Kerry and try to find uh, count how many of them you can find where he's not doing the hang loose. Oh, no. <laughs> There's like none. Wait, you're telling me... That one of the best film villains, because let's face it, Kerry, uh, uh, well, I can't remember, uh, Kikigawa, Kariyuki, uh, uh, Tagawa, uh, is a rad dude. Yeah. And he's got standard evil face. Like, he can't not have evil guy face. And he's like, yeah, bruh, let's get some gnar. <laughs> yeah, he grew up mostly in Southern California. Born in Japan. Drop on in and get pitted. I think he did some time in Hawaii. He was an army brat, so he was all over different forts, but he likes to hang loose. He went to USC. Mm, okay, so you can't judge a book by its cover. There you go. That's a little sneaker madness advice. Uh, beyond Carrie, we also are getting a return visit from Lisa Langolis of Class of 1984 and The Nest. Oh, okay. She was in The Nest. We didn't do an episode on... Uh, Class of 1984. Huh. Okay. And who was she in the movie? The mom who's in it for like oh. five minutes. <laughs> Whoa. Hey, headliner. <laughs> yeah. All right. She was the lady who looked like she was attacked by a weed whacker. Right. She was shitty Denise Crosby, which is shitty Denise Crosby. Like there's not a good Denise Crosby. So that is where I'm going next, because I think that and it has nothing to do with shitty Denise Crosby, but I think Gary Daniels gets accused of being shitty Jean-Claude Van Damme mm. when Jean-Claude Van Damme himself is shitty right. Jean-Claude Van yeah, Damme. Right. Okay. Where Gary Daniels is sort of his own animal. They have a lot of similarities in that they were both kickboxers, mm -hmm. but Gary Daniels' professional career was a lot more brief than Van Damme's mm -hmm. and a lot more accomplished. He just showed up, won both of the major belts that he could win, and then retired. Yes. And then went to show his butt and his uh, splits ability on film. Which one? They both do that. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's... Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, I've got another Gary Daniels comparison for the end of the episode that I want to crack into, so... Uh... Uh, let's let's add JCVD to the mix to that as well. But uh, uh, why why things are the way they are for old GD? Um, any, anything else we want to discuss before we get into this thing? Because there's not a lot of front end. Not a no, not really. Okay, unless you want to hear about Gary Daniels' kids. Um, yeah, I do. <laughs> uh, so he went to the Philippines to start making movies directly after winning the two belts. Uh -huh. And promptly retiring from kickboxing. Met his wife, had kids. Uh, his oldest is a stuntman, and his youngest is actually a pro soccer player in the Philippines. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, is the uh, stuntman uh, doing anything that uh, we would, uh, you know, I mean, where's he working at? Is he working in the Philippines? No, he's working in Hollywood. All right. All right. Crashing cars and uh, getting kicked in the face. I like it. Doing karate stuff. Yeah. He's in. He's one of the Disney stuntmans for the Marvel movies. Oh, okay, all right. So he's probably uh, familiar with uh, what's his name, Scott. Uh, Scott Batman. Atkins. Atkins. Yeah, 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 yeah. I wonder if they know each other. Um. All right. So, anyways, White Tiger. Uh, we start out in Hong Kong, 
uh, there's uh, a new drug being uh, brought forth to the triad slash Yakuza. Well, the Yakuza is in Japan. The triads are in Hong Kong. This is 1995. This is pre uh, uh, liberation, or I mean, uh, 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 China owning Hong Kong. This is still England's Hong Kong, isn't it? Yes. Also, they in the movie, they are not the Yakuza or the Triad. They are the Zelchon. The Z- <laughs> oh, from space. Yes. The Zelchon. Yes. Uh, a race that uh, L. Ron Hubbard worships. <laughs> the Zelchon? The Zelchon. That's a terrible I thought name. Zelchon was the cafeteria in Dark Seed Spaceship. <laughs> Come get, come get your Zelchon. <laughs> yeah. He's going to head down to the Zelchon, grab some slurg. <laughs> oh, my God. That's that's uh, unbelievable. All right. So, anyways, they're like, uh, uh, come on in, um, Victor Chong, who is uh, Kerry Tag- Tag- Tagawa. Um, they're like, uh, you've uh, we sent you to America because you're a tough guy and uh, we like the way you get things done. But now you're getting a little fast and loose with how we do business. And we've got uh, we've got good coke. We've got good crack. We've got good heroin. And now you've brought drug X in because at no point during this film is Carrie's special sauce defined as to what it is. It isn't, but it's obviously crystal meth. What? No, I thought crystal meth was was like big chunks. Like this is I don't know. This is like little salt rocks. J- Jackie, maybe it's the bath salt. Oh yeah, could be bath salt. Um, no, he says there's no side effects, and we clearly know there's side effects to bath salts. <laughs> yes, I thought that it was just rock candy, like pop rocks. No, like you know those uh, sugar sticks that you get for your coffee and they have and they're just crystallized sugar okay but that's what it looked like is that maybe he smashed one of those up and put it in a thing and it's like new drug guys mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh. makes you feel all happy and shit which sugar does um he says that it's highly addictive and no side effects maybe it's just sugar and these people are like oh my god i feel so good and i don't want to throw up but if i have too much i'll throw up <laughs> Well, I mean, they do have, their cookies are like onion cookies. So a little thing of sugar like that is probably pretty awesome. Oh, that's some, that's some Hong Kong racism. <laughs> the sugar cookies that we yeah. had, Jack, or the, the onion cookies that we had actually came from Taiwan. Different place. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Okay, wait. I take that back. I'm sorry. Hong Kong's very westernized. It was uh, colonized by the English for many, many decades. So you're saying that they already had sugar. Well, they have dear it's it's English sugar, so it's different than our sugar. They actually enjoy chocolate. Instead, we enjoy synthetic bl- brown stuff. <laughs> Their chocolate is gross in England. Mm, they say our chocolate's gross over here. Uh, our chocolate is so bad that it legally can't be decl- defined as chocolate in England. Well, if it's not chocolate, it's not chocolate, right? Yeah, it's it's more other stuff than chocolate. Like chocolate's not even one of the primary components to a Hershey's candy bar. It's damn are they good. Okay. Um all right, so there's a new drug on the market and uh the uh the the Zelchon are like it's going to cannibalize our other lines and this is a bad business idea. How about you don't? And he's like, Rrr. I don't like being told what to do." So he leaves and then he goes and sees his nerd friend I guess who's his cook? Uh, yeah, the guy that helped him invent whatever this shit is. He's like, how dare you? Uh, I'm going to stick a brand in your forehead and teach you a lesson, and then I'm going to just kill you. He ran out of yeah. smiley face just... stickers. He ran out of what? Smiley face stickers. So he had to go to the brand because it was just cheaper. Mm-hmm. Because that brand looks like a smiley face. It does look like a smiley face a little bit when you brand somebody. <laughs> and also, before we get too much further, they also tell uh, Victor Ch- Chong. Chow. Chow. Hey, don't do that. We already killed your dad. Don't make us kill you too. Did they kill his dad for the same reason? His dad was a loose cannon. The hubris? Like, this is just the Chow family is cursed with hubris and... and... It. 
is more impatient yeah. than anything. Okay. All right. <laughs> uh, good thing the uh, family dynasty ends with Victor Chow. Um, all right. So in the Adirondacks, uh, Mike Ryan, our Gary Daniels, and his bro John, I don't even care, uh, they're, they're shredding the gnar while repelling, which I've never seen in film. This is just shitty repelling. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's not that it's not steep enough to have a good time. It's like, let's walk slowly up this rock and then run backwards down it somewhat faster than we went up, w- up. It. Right. But they're talking like, dude, you ready to do this? You ready to, you ready to get some, let's get some bro. Yeah. Yeah. And then they jump off and they're like, whoa, yeah, well check me out. Like, dude, it's just repelling. You're going down. There's not freestyle repelling. <laughs> It's not even repelling because they're on an incline. It's not even right. like bouncing down straight like repelling would be. They're just roped and running down a really steep rock. <laughs> right. Well, well, and they're like hopping around like bunnies. Mm-hmm. Like, woo, yeah, this is fun. Watch me double hop. Yeah, I'm, I'm hot dogging it. Yeah, and I'm like, what the hell is this? You got your uh, GoPro? Let's let's get this and uh, live stream it, man. People are gonna lose their minds when they see how much gnar we're catching. You guys look like dorks. <laughs> yeah, they look like dorks. It'd probably get a million views on yeah, TikTok or whatever okay. fucking happens with that shit. Good point. Um, all right, so down at the bottom, we uh, get a costume change. Oh yeah, they they do change their clothes somehow. Uh, but they're attacked in the woods. Gary Daniels' spider sense goes off, and he's like, <laughs> like he's Wolverine. Like there's something out there. And then it's, they're fucking leaped on by a child (laughs) who they pummel. (laughs) They beat the shit out of this kid and then make him carry their stuff. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, My only note here was couldn't find a bigger shirt, Gary. Right. (laughs) Hey, this is the mid nineties. Big shirts were a big deal. You know, I had one of those dress shirts wasn't like something you wore that was formal. It was just a shirt that was actually a dress. Yeah, it was. You could camp in mm-hmm. it if you ended up in the woods. Well, I pitched many tents in those. It was the mid nineties. Hey, oh, <laughs> you have to pair them with sweatpants and a, a trapper keeper <laughs> in order to conceal your boner. You need the trapper keeper for that. Uh, okay, all right. So uh, it's it's John's son. Uh, and, and he's, they're on family vacation. It's the first, uh, vacation he's had in Eon six months. He's been deep cover or some shit. I don't know. Uh, but a call comes in on his satellite phone in the mid nineties, but it's really just a brick, which wasn't a satellite phone. It, when I, it wasn't even the brick. It was one of those, uh, early, uh, Motorola flippers. Wasn't it? Yeah. It, it doesn't have service here. This no. movie immediately <laughs> does not know how phones right. work. Staple. Um, but they got to go back to Seattle. They've got uh, the higher ups have got word that there's a big, big meetup, a big deal shaking down in Seattle. And uh, they got to go potentially bust some dudes. Now, does the DEA only have like 10, do- 10 guys? Right. Because like, it seems like they've only got like these 10 guys that can step up and do this. And two of them are on vacation mm-hmm. and they haven't had a vacation in six months. Mm-hmm. And, Obviously, there's some really good job security here at the DEA because you can tell your boss to go fuck himself. Yes. And then fuck you, too. And then hang up and then show up to work. And they're like, here's a gun. Right. Which I mean, it would make sense if these guys were going in uh, like uh, like uh, Jungle Ground uh, where to bust the drug sting. They had to have guys show up uh, still undercover, but they're not. And it even says. Don't worry, you're going to go in in such a way that it won't blow your cover. Dressed up as SWAT guys? I'm pretty sure that's going to blow our cover. Yeah. They don't need to be there. Send in SWAT guys. (laughs) In the middle of the movie, one of the detectives is like, this is a local problem. Why are you here? Right. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I I think this has got a case of the, the, uh, uh, not the bees. Um, Wicker Man, where like, dude, this is not your jurisdiction. Get the fuck out. Um, or or the sabotage. Yeah, this is the only team less shitty 
than the is it the ATF in sabotage? I think that's who they were. Yeah, yeah. Accurate depiction, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So Chow shows up to this meeting. He's meeting with his uncle, who's this guy named Tang, and uh, he's like, uh, uh, "I love your delicious orange drink." Yeah, yeah. It's good for astronauts. Uh, also, uh, Jackie and I noticed that when uh, Victor Chow shows up, uh, he is in a Mercedes and he doesn't wait for it to stop before he gets out of the car. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's reckless. <laughs> See, that's that's where I know a, a little bit about uh, leading a criminal organization and, and management uh, philosophies as far as that. I see... Uh, you know, Victor Chow get out of the car like this, and I'm like, no, this guy's got to go. Um, yes, you, when you're a guy like you, you have to look badass when you get out of the car. But wait for it to stop the whole way before you get out, and then take off your sunglass, sunglasses and sneer and and squint around like what kind of do the you can't do it all at once. You gotta you gotta line that shit up safety first in bad guying. Well, I think what's happening here is that Carrie's been an actor for so long that the clock in his head is ticking and the driver is doing a shitty job over and over again. And on the third take, he's just like, fuck it. We only have four seconds for the shot. I just have to get out now. <laughs> Unlock the door, Phil. Um, all right. So he goes in and he's like, hey, uncle, I've got this new drug um, and do you want it? And the drunk, uh, the drunk um the uncle's like well here's the deal you're you got out of the car really fast and i think you're dangerous you're you're maverick and uh i don't really trust working with you so i'm gonna go ahead and say no and i don't like your arrowhead necklace would you like a piece of fruit yes <laughs> what's with the fucking plate of fruit <laughs> it's like a grapefruit an orange and an apple in a nice wooden bowl in the middle of some shitty rundown warehouse and it's like no it's not even in a bowl it's on like a tiny plate. yeah like a coaster <laughs> like at some point during their bad guying setup they're like okay well we of course have to go to a warehouse we can't have our meetings in our high-rise apartments i mean that's stupid uh or a hotel room with hookers like the like the lethal weapon people do no we got to go to a warehouse um but i am a little hungry and i'm on a diet <laughs> Did you bring snacks? Yeah, I got a grapefruit, an orange, and an apple. You are fucking fired. <laughs> I can't wait to munch on some delicious fruits until after the meeting's over. I got to bring them with me. All right, so Mike and company, they start moving in, uh, and they got snipers on the roof. They've got, like, the, uh, how many how many DEA guys do you think they got here? Like, 10? There seems to be... Somewhere between six and eight, mm -hmm. that number changes. Yeah. The bad guy number changes yes. throughout the scene. Mm -hmm. But the one thing I wrote down is I don't buy anyone in the DEA SWAT team being on a SWAT team other than Gary. Okay, what's that? Because they look like they're all shoe salesmen. Yeah, yeah, they sure do. <laughs> and they shoot that way, too. <laughs> they have the snipers up there. They're supposed to, like, you know, be backing up. The guys on the ground and they can't hit shit. They're snipers. They're sitting there <laughs> at the top of the building, and like th there's no obstacle to shooting these dudes. They're, they're not just even standing moving there. targets. Yeah, they're just freaking standing there up against the car, uh -huh. and they cannot shoot these no, dudes. They can't. Oh my gosh! All right, so some rough riders they show up uh, on motorcycles, and uh, the cops are like, "Hey, who are these guys?" And uh, the other thing about this film is sound doesn't work at all because. Uh, John is on the back of the building and he can hear the motorcycles come in. Whereas the people inside doing the meeting do not hear the motorcycles come in later. The same thing applies to gunfire. Um, but, uh, uh, they show up or there's mass confusion outside. And, uh, right as the uncle says, no, they open fire. As if and then, they knew, like, that was the plan all along. Like, but what if he says, yes, I'll sell your newfangled drug? Shoot everybody anyways? I guess the people outside get shot, mm -hmm. regardless of what happens. I mean, the people outside that get shot by the henchmen get shot. Right. The people outside who are henchmen do not get shot by the sharpshooters. Right. Yes. Uh, so there's bullets flying everywhere. Uh, uh, Mike goes in to to get uh, Tang. He's still on the Tang hunt. 
And uh, but Chow's grabbed him and has disappeared into the uh, tear gas cloud. The way that they go in is also interesting because Gary Daniels is like, we got to go in now. Otherwise, we won't get him. And they're like, wait, we can just hang out for a minute. We sent tear gas They'll in there. All shoot each uh-huh. other. And we'll pick up the pieces afterwards. No, we got to go. There's shooting going on and I'm not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so he finds Tang. He's dead, uh, and uh, John goes in to to chase after Chow because now, I mean, they don't even know that Chow exists. They're like, "Hey, there's bullets flying everywhere. Uh, Tang is dead. It couldn't have been us because we don't hit our targets. I guess I don't know how they. Wh- they're like, we got to get the guy who did this. There's us? You don't know that Chow six- did that." to eight points in this gunfight where the DEA just needs to like hold the phone. Mm-hmm. Let's just, we should, we should take a look at what's happening here for a minute uh-huh. and then reevaluate our plan of rushing in like dickheads yeah, and they don't. they don't, especially knowing that the sharpshooters are not very sharp. Oh You've worked with these guys before. They can't hit men standing 120 yards away, not moving. Well, one of the bikers pulls out a freaking grenade launcher. Uh, uh, where'd you get that? <laughs> it wasn't on his motorcycle. No, it wasn't on his motorcycle. He just had it. And it's like a pocket grenade launcher. That's the size of an MGL. Uh, it then blows he, up the he, parking garage. Actually, he blows up a car. Oh, that's right. There's no one's <laughs> that's car. Right. Whose car was that? <laughs> it's There's just a car parked very poorly in the middle of the road there and it, it's a, just a maroon car uh-huh. that he blows up and what the police do then is they don't make a roadblock they just drive around in circles while the motorcycles ride around in circles and then the motorcycles just ride away see that's going to happen to me one day in the motorhome like i'm going to be like ah, oh, god damn it it broke down again well i'll just leave it here in this nondescript location and then two days later, I'm going to come back with a tow truck to pick it up. And it's going to have been exploded by a grenade launcher. That was just some innocent yeah. guys like his LTD that he was like, look, it's a good deal. It's a really comfortable car to drive all. You know, it's not sexy and it does have some uh, gremlins inside of it, but it's really comfortable and gets pretty decent gas mileage for having a giant V8 in it. Uh, but it's it's got a sticky alternator. And, uh, man, I had to leave it down by the docks last week. I'll, I'll pick it up today, yeah. and there's nothing left. <laughs> what the shit? What happened to my car? <laughs> Not my LTD. <laughs> there's then through the escape of the motorcycle, guys, Gary's making his way through the warehouse, and a man just appears. Uh-huh. He's just a new guy right. that hasn't been in the movie mm-hmm. yet. And what I figure here is that Gary's pockets are full of karate tokens and he just needs to spend one right here. (laughs) He karate's this guy to death. He kicks him in the head so hard that his brains come out of his ears, nose and mouth. (laughs) And then we're cut back to our loan car that's been blown up as a sharpshooter actually shoots one of the motorcycle's tires out Uh and he slides into the the car that's on fire and it explodes again. The car explodes again. (laughs) Not the motorcycle. The car exploded twice. (laughs) How many gas tanks are in an LTD anyways? That one had nitrous. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) So it was going to blow up anyways is what you're telling me. Yeah. (laughs) Right. Ah, I I smell some insurance fraud coming. (laughs) <laughs> All right, so uh, Chow has grabbed John as a hostage, and uh, Mike chases after him to the end of this pier, and he's like, drop it. No, you drop it. Take the shot, Mike. I can't take the shot, dude. You're blocking it. Maybe uh, maybe move, or I don't know what the fuck. Quit jumping up yeah. and down in front of him, <laughs> because that's what you're doing right now. You're jumping up and down, blocking him, going, take the shot. <laughs> Shoot me. <laughs> Then shoot him. Well, I mean, really? He could have shot, like, shot through his leg or something, Mm -hmm. you know, and, like, at least wounded him. 
is shoot the hostage. Is it really a good strategy? Pop quiz hot shot. Because anytime we have one of these hostage situations where yes, if it's some banker lady that gets taken away, I don't know if you shoot that lady, but if it's your cop bro, I mean, you know, Keanu Reeves shot Jeff Daniels, right? Um, who you, yeah. you don't shoot Jeff Daniels. He's royalty, but he shot Jeff Daniels and it worked out. I think you shoot the hostage here. This guy has been begging to get shot for a while. Mm-hmm. He just had his gun taken away. Like Carrie didn't have to even work hard to, uh, to take this man. Prisoner. No, no. I think it was just all a ruse to get out of camping with his wife <laughs> 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 and that little kid that they beat up. <laughs> They're like, you know, I hate, I hate my family. Let's just go to work. Oh no, I'm getting called back to do my job. Oh, bummer. And then he's like, just end it all for me. Yeah. Yeah. Which I I can't go back to that life. I'm not going to leave my wife. Uh, just, just pop me in the head. Which, uh, Chow does. He shoots him in the throat and then jumps into a getaway boat and gets away. Oh, this was so cool. Cause man, did he just hit that pad just right on the back of the boat and then just rolled in and then just sat there like cool guy yeah it was awesome who's got malibu also the dea nor the police thought to maybe put a boat in this equation in at the warehouse next to the bay yes where boats are typically parked at uh yeah yeah Ooh. well in their defense he showed up and jumped out of a car. He was mm-hmm. probably going to jump back in the car, but then the car got exploded. That's a good point. When he arrived, the vehicle he was in was moving. When he left, the vehicle he was in was moving. <laughs> yeah, this I guy mean, is efficient. Maybe he's not as yeah. loose card as we thought. <laughs> we talked about how the Zelchon are trying to get rid of him because of his impatience. <laughs> he can't wait for boats or cars to stop. Uh, so... Uh, it's cleanup time, and uh, the big wigs, the DEA, and the local sheriff, or I don't know who the fuck these guys are, they're like, uh, you're too close to this case, Mike. We're going to send you home. And home is, I have no idea where, but he doesn't go there. Instead, he goes to a flea bag motel in Chinatown. Mm-hmm. But not before, and this is really fucked up, he, he meets the wife and son at the airport. Mm-hmm. And she's just like, talking about how he's not going to get a funeral. He was making up his own religion. Right. And then the kid's like, don't worry, I'll take care of her. He's not crying. He's not upset. Nobody is emotionally distraught by the death of John. (laughs) Yeah. John is a piece of shit, apparently, because the wife is just like, yeah, I'll sign for him. Yeah. And I'm not going to give him a funeral because, you know what, they provided this awesome casket, and I'm just going to take him home and burn him. Ma'am, do you want his ashes? Mm, (laughs) I'm okay. (laughs) I'm good. <laughs> is this one of those things where it's like pets, where you put multiple people in, and I'm not sure if I'm really getting yeah, my husband right, back? Right. <laughs> um, how much is the urn? Because I don't want to pay for that either. Just put him in a plastic Ziploc bag and give him to me. A big gulp. <laughs> yeah. She, there's no ashes. Gary just sort of pushed him off the pier. <laughs> no, my partner. Okay, bye-bye, bud. <laughs> bye-bye. Club. And I like how she's like, you you need to be a pallbearer. And he's like, okay. And then he doesn't go home to Nothing bury his friend. Nothing ever happens with anything about John. Yeah, John is just fucking, I mean, yeah, screw John. John is a piece of shit. <laughs> he's a bad husband and a bad father who beat his kid. Yeah, or yeah, I guess he did beat his kid up. We saw it on film. Uh, meanwhile, Chow is uh, banging Sandra Bernhard for gratuity. Uh, I thought that was interesting. The only nudity, well, not yeah. the only nudity in the film is is an actress who bears an uncanny resemblance to a comedian. For no for no reason. <laughs> Other than boobs. He, no, yeah, it's just like boobs. And then he like yells at his own security force and is like, I, you, know, you guys aren't as even as safe as condoms, <laughs> which I'm not using right now. Just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So back in Hong Kong, the Zelchon have said enough. This guy's better at moving in stuff than we are. We got to take him out. We're sending in an assassin to deal with him. Uh, this assassin has uh, dealt with his dad. It was the same person that 
I guess, killed his dad for being impatient or something. Yeah, you know, they have really hard hard rules in the uh, Zellwigger. Zeltron. <laughs> Zeltron, Zellwigger. <laughs> Love lemon juice in the Zellwigger. <laughs> <laughs> that's what her face looks like. Ooh, I love you, Jerry Maguire. Ooh, this this Ooh. lemon is bitter. <laughs> Yeah, she has nothing on Kira Knightley's lemon face. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> okay, uh, so Mike uh, goes. He's like, "I'm, I'm not too close to this case. I'm gonna go solve it on my own." And uh, he goes down to Chinatown. Hey, is there a Chinatown in Seattle? We're packed Northwesters. We've all been to Seattle a hundred times. I've never seen a Chinatown. I hate Seattle with a passion, yeah, so I don't pay attention to any yeah, of it when I'm right, there. Right. I only go to the pier when I'm there, mm-hmm. and I avoid the homeless like you would not believe. That's not possible. <laughs> well, you just pretend like you don't see them. I'm I'm a bastard, okay? I I just like, I don't see you. I don't see you as I'm drinking my $6 coffee. Mm-hmm. God, I'm a dick. Yeah, and, and getting hit in the face with a kipper because you're down at the yeah. market. Pike's Pike's Market? Pike's, what is yeah, it it's called? Pike's Market. Pike's Peak. Hill climb, yeah. Or they throw fish at you while you drive a car fast. <laughs> That'd be fun. I'm slipping on the fish. <laughs> Getting loose. <laughs> the scales. <laughs> okay. All right. So he, he's down in Chinatown. He's like, I'm looking around for this guy. Um, and he just happens to see a nightclub that has Chow's logo on it. Well, that's a pretty good place to start looking, I guess. Well, and it's the yeah. nicest thing in the entire movie. This nightclub. Is the nicest place in this entire movie. Okay. You're really hung up and on the visuals, locations. The entrance of this is the first of two Grace Park sightings. Uh, Grace Park from uh, Battlestar Galactica? Really? Yeah, she's an extra and she gets to she gets a face she gets FaceTime in two nice. shots. Oh, she's one of the one dancers. At the beginning, she walks by the camera, and at the end, she's smoking a cigarette outside. How about that? Well, nice. No, she was not one of the dancers. Um, anyways, okay, so, uh, he's like, hey, uh, uh, I'm, I'm not from around here, as you can probably tell, um, but, uh, you ever heard of a guy named Victor Chow? He's a real piece of shit. I bet you he's your boss, because his logo is on the fucking building, Gary! You're, you're yeah. a DA agent, you should be, like, working your way in. Instead, he's like, all right, who do I gotta punch in the face to get to Raymond, uh, Victor Chow? Raymond Chow? <laughs> Raymond Chow. <laughs> and the guy's like, just gives him the fuck off look. And that's when, uh, what is Jade shows yeah, up? Jade. Yeah, this is weird because you don't see the ice mm-hmm. at first. So it just looks like she's just like, well, yeah, sat down and starts just like rubbing her face and shit. And you're like, what is happening? Why, what is this lady doing? Is this a Bud Light commercial? And Gary Daniels is just like staring, staring her down like she's so. The best piece of shrimp on the Barbie he has ever seen. Ooh, racist? Question mark. We have Outback Steakhouse, <laughs> sir. <laughs> right, right, yeah. That's where I learned that from. And everything we know about Australia is from Outback Steakhouse here in America. Um, and crocodile. Right, right, right. Yeah. This is a knife. Okay, so she's just sitting. She's like just rubbing all over herself. And then they finally get the ice in the shot. Does it make a difference, Jackie? Well, have you ever yeah, been because... to a nightclub where people are like, hold on, I need to pull this ice cube out of my my fruit cocktail that I've got here and rub myself down because I've been out doing my dance moves and they are electric. Somebody put a hose on me. <laughs> I still think it's weird. It's weird. <laughs> and it's not sexy. But it's not as weird as what happens next where she's like. Who are you? And he's like, my name's Mike, and I'm trying to infiltrate the <laughs> the, un- the criminal underground. And she's like, you are doing a shitty job. <laughs> my name's Mike. I work for the DEA. I'm looking for a guy named Victor Chow. His logo's outside, and he's the type of dude who, if you tell he- me where he is, he will murder you and your family. Now, you ever heard of him before? <laughs> No, I sure haven't. Security! <laughs> yeah. So the she speaks. I 
I don't really know what they're they're supposed to be Chinese or Japanese or what's going on here. They never they're Zelchon. Mm-hmm. So yeah. she speaks Zelchon to the right? bartender, and he's like, "Wow!" Throws out a white page's phone book. Yeah. Oh, start looking there. All right, I'll give it a go. <laughs> Why didn't I think of he that? He doesn't. <laughs> he doesn't because I bet he's in there. <laughs> See, and I thought that this was gonna be like he'd be like, "Thanks," and then take it and open it, and there would be like. You know, like those pop-up cans, you know, with the pe- peanuts that go everywhere in oh, your face, yeah. oh, right? Oh, it's a practical joke. Yeah, it's like a joke phone book. That would be... Where all the pages have been like, Victor, <laughs> you go to Chow and every and like the whole page has just been blacked out, like redacted. That's a that's a real <laughs> gamble on being able to use that practical joke in this nightclub, Jackie. Boy, I hope somebody someday comes in and ask for my boss's phone number so that this gag can actually get used because that phone book's been sitting underneath this bar for about 15 years. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, it's kind of like when you start working at a place where everybody locks their office so you can't go in there and tape like their phone down mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Right. Because I'm five. All right, so f- I was actually hoping that Gary Daniels would start beating the bartender yeah, with right, the phone book right. and go, your face is an unlisted number. <laughs> But instead, he orders himself a fruity drink. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have one of those. Like, do you even know what that is? And I'm pretty sure that at this point, the bartender's like, go fuck yourself. So he's put some Visine in there to give Gary Daniels the shits. And that's why he <laughs> leaves so quickly after the phone book. He's like, uh-oh, gotta go. <laughs> gotta go? Because he's fucking cockney, Jackie. <laughs> I don't know how to do a... Right! <laughs> <laughs> I don't... I only know how to do the the one um, accent from Crocodile Dundee, okay? <laughs> and I have to say, this is a knife, and that's as close as I can get to an Australian accent. Here's Jackie's Australian imperson- impersonation. Manchester United sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Chelsea football. <laughs> Good Aussie, Jackie. Okay, um, all right. So anyway, so he leaves. He goes out into this alleyway where he's immediately tailed, four guys surround him, he beats the shit out of them, uh, and then Jade comes out from behind uh, some building or something. <laughs> the and dumpster she, where she yeah, was working. Right? <laughs> and she's like, hey, dude, here's the deal, bro. You're going about this the wrong way. Uh, you're, you're barking up the wrong trees, and, and you're going to get yourself in trouble. And he's like, all right, well, I'll follow you all the way to your apartment. And she's like, go home now and he's like i don't have one <laughs> <laughs> they've kicked me out of my motel because i plugged the toilet too many times now he's a fucking <laughs> he's a longshoreman i don't know yeah the accents are just gonna get worse as we just go okay try not to do the accent <laughs> no because that's part of the fun of being on the show oh, okay. and i don't get to do it very often anymore all right. All right. So uh, she goes in and by herself and she calls Chow uh, because the whole thing that this movie dances around with for a while that is plainfully obvious is that she has a relationship with Chow, Chow where they were banging or doing drugs together. I don't know what the hell. Um, but uh, later we find out that she was raised by his family. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. All right. But he knows that she's an assassin. Mm-hmm. Hey, spoilers. <laughs> yeah, it's a whole bunch of angles. This is a lot of intrigue, I guess. All right. Well, the next day, uh, Mike is still just hanging out, hoping he stumbles into something, and he sure does because he sees uh, three bikers uh, that uh, fit the description of the guys he never saw from the beginning of the movie because he was inside the building when they were outside of the building. Uh, he's like, oh, hey, those guys, I'll follow them. So he tails them. And- but this is why he doesn't have the correct colored motorcycle to blend. Because he didn't know what color their motorcycles were. Good point, yeah. So he got a white one. All right, so uh, Chow's down at the uh, pier again. Different pier or docks, or I'm not sure where they're at, but it's by the water. And uh, he's doing another one of his things where he's like, hey, I got this new drug. You want to sell it? And the guy's like, no. Okay, then. Die. Yeah, he's like... No, we're all busy, <laughs> all full up with work here. Sorry. <laughs> we're moving the drugs right now. No room in the van. And then they get into a pissing contest. 
And then they, he puts him in a headlock. And he's like, oh, now that you're in the Hurt Locker, you're going to change your mind? And the guy's like, yes, I am. He's like, too bad. I've decided to kill you instead. <laughs> like, I don't think Chow's good at business. He might be good at being a bad guy, but he's running out of people that he can sell this to because his, his like, all right, all right, I got a big meeting today. I'm going to land this fish. <laughs> I am going to mm-hmm. close this deal. A, B, C, uh, uh, what's his nuts? Uh, Alec Baldwin from, uh, Glenn Gary Glenn Ross is going to be taking notes yeah. from me today. Uh, I'm going to kill my customer. <laughs> <laughs> like, running out of people. You haven't made a dime off your new drug. You've sold it no. to no one because you kill them before they can buy it. <laughs> and he's like, Earlier, I think he says to one of the guys that works for him, he's like, I need, you know, 500 kilos of this in two weeks. And the guy's like, you killed the chemist (laughs) after you branded his head. (laughs) And your customers. I mean, okay. I'll just smile and say, yep, will do, boss, because I know that you're going to kill me if I say no. Or maybe we should actually have somebody who can make this stuff employed. Well, and I mean, let's not forget, gentlemen, that the first rule of dealing drugs is the first hit is always free. That's how you get them okay. to do your drugs, right? right. He's not even offering nope, them a sure free not. hit. Sure not. He's just like, sell this. And yeah. they're like, what is it? And he's like, sugar in a glass jar. Pass? <laughs> <laughs> Give me the bomb that we packed. Yeah. This is going south. Oh, my God. Yeah, they're like, how do you do these drugs? Just what, however, <laughs> however you want. Chew them up, snort them, smoke them, inject them. It doesn't but. matter. <laughs> doesn't it? All right, so Mike sees this all goes down, and he runs in too late, uh, and some uh, rookie cop comes in, and he's like, get on the ground, and he gets handcuffed, and so Mike can't get away. And uh, then the big wigs come in, uh, which is, uh, or not a, not, a, not the big wig, who is this guy? He's a the guy that comes next is just one of the other detectives. Okay. Maybe he's the captain. He's the captain, and he's like, I already told you to fuck off once. Yeah. Why are you still here? Yeah. And then he's like, by the way, you're crappy at your job. And then there's evidence that the guy is, in fact, crappy at his job yes. because he didn't notice that the van blew up with drugs in it. In his defense, he did just get there. <laughs> I mean, it's a pretty dick move on Gary <laughs> Daniels' part. So they tell him, hey, you got to get the hell out of town. This isn't your case. This isn't your jurisdiction. Beat it. I'm driving you to your hotel. You got 10 minutes to pack up your shit. Uh, get up in there. And so he leaves, goes upstairs. Meanwhile, downstairs, uh, Chow pulls up to Detective Fong. That's the character's name. And is like, all right, you're going to have to whack him. And Fong's like, okay. And who needs 20 minutes to pack a duffel bag? Right. Like, no, you needed 20 minutes to take a shit and plug that toilet up one more time. Mm-hmm. So uh, he, the, Detective Fong's like, hey, I got this tip on where Chow's at. Let's go check it out. <laughs> and Gary Dan's like, okay. So they go to this old uh, hospital, and the guy who arrested or handcuffed Gary Daniels at the dock is there, and he's like, yeah, Chow's inside. I saw him go in with a bunch of... Tough guys. And, uh, yep, they're sure inside that old hospital. Uh, Call for backup? No, we don't have time for backup. Okay, I'll just wait outside. He, he, he. Well, that guy was like... What a dangerous bluff. What if he decides to wait for backup? (laughs) It's not coming because they're going to hit him. Right. So, where is that backup? It's been 30 minutes. Think think the backup's coming? It's like the guy Bobby's like, it's over there. Can you see the backup? (laughs) Can Just you look see over there. <laughs> uh, maybe it's down by your untied shoelaces. You check down there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so they go in. Uh, and outside, it's just Gary Daniels and uh, Detective Fong and this one other guy who stays outside. But then as soon as they go inside, there's this third guy there out of nowhere. <laughs> You're like, who the fuck is this guy? <laughs> I don't know who any of... I was really confused here. Like, are they dirty cops? Are they not dirty cops? The connection to the Zelchon seems loose at Uh best. And then some guy just shows up and gets shot. (laughs) And then the other guy's like, that was my partner. 
You're like, what? <laughs> I thought Bobby was your partner. Right. Yeah. My, so Mike shoots Fong and then Bobby comes in and he sees a couple corpses of cops with Gary Daniels standing over him with a gun. He's like, freeze you because I'm dirty or you're a cop holding a gun over the corpses. That you're the only person here who could have killed these two other cops. I don't know which I am, but either way, uh, uh, Mike runs out uh, and escapes. Though the dubious nature of these dirty cops is prevalent, if they are dirty cops, he is one because when the captain shows up, he lies to him about what happened. Bobby? That's true. Yeah, yes. that's true. That's true. He does. Uh... And then the DEA guy mm -hmm. is there still, and he's like... Just do what you usually do, because I think he's onto them being dirty cops or something. Because he's like, my guy will sort this out either way, but you just play it straight. We'll see what happens yeah. here. Uh, so Mike goes to Jade, and she patches him up. And uh, after he leaves, uh, she sees him on the front page as the most wanted fugitive in Seattle or someplace. How does he get up to her apartment? He's outside, yeah. and she clearly lives at the top of a very tall building. Mm. The buzzer? No, he's outside in, like, outside air. There's a tree out there. <laughs> so there's, like, some garden or something on the rooftop that she lives, like a terrace or something. How did he get up there? That's true. That's a good point. Huh. Okay. Uh... So he goes to another uh, logo place that he sees, and uh, he beats up the dudes inside and finds upstairs a gambling ring, and he's like, uh, I want to leave a message, uh, tell Chow that uh, I'm coming for him. And they're like, no. And he's like, all right, well, how about if I shoot your gambling table? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's just like, fuck that table. <laughs> I'd still be like, Man, I'm glad that fucking guy with that gun is gone. Uh, let's go back to playing cards. Because <laughs> the table's still yeah, good. It's still fine. It's just got a hole in it. What was that all about? I don't know. Uh, you, call. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So um, he calls Jade and uh, from a payphone, and he's like, yeah, I don't know where I am, but uh, there's this... Uh, uh, a golden dragon uh, Chinese restaurant there. Can you, can you come get me? And she's like, can you be more specific? And he's like, golden dragon. It's the Chinese restaurant. And she's like, yeah, there's like 50 of those asshole racist prick. Uh, so she goes and picks him up and uh, takes him to a parking garage and the bikers are there. They've, they're creeping in on him. And then this gets confusing because the bikers start chasing them mm -hmm. around, but then another car shows up and just wastes the bikers with a machine gun. And you're like, who are these guys? Right. Did they miss? Like, because he's like, get down. And, and they both hit the pavement and bullets start flying and it takes out all the bikers. And then the Merc drives away and you're like, were those, was that supposed to happen? <laughs> or did you kill your own guys? Uh, I want to. I am confused. See, and I'm confused on. Who in the fuck goes, get down, and lays down between bikers that'll run your ass over mm -hmm. and a machine gun on the other side? Like, they're going to get you if you just lay there. Like, you can't play possum, <laughs> Gary Daniels. What, what are you supposed to do? Like, jump up into the... Well, they should have rolled over to, the, like, the edge of the parking <laughs> thing and jumped down. Ah, like... oh, you can't run over here. We're, in the, we're on the, the walk area of the parking garage. <laughs> this is not for cars. Get out of here. <laughs> Roll faster. Roll, roll. <laughs> roll to the walking area. <laughs> That's what I would have done. Okay. But I don't really find myself in situations where I'm in a parking garage with... I started out <laughs> yeah. with two bikers, and then it ends up being like eight. <laughs> and then, you know... A, a okay, so I've got to say, I was completely enthralled with the Mercedes because they had um, windshield wipers on the headlights. Yeah. And I was like, oh, my God, that's amazing. Yeah, most German cars at that point in time had uh, well, the entire Merc line in the 90s had, except for the C-classes because those were cheap, uh, had windshield wipers. The Audis did. Uh, I think the 5 Series and the 7 Series from the Beamers had them. I don't ever think I've ever seen that. Really? Mm -hmm. I was just enthralled by it. Okay. It's pretty common. Um, anyways, so uh, in fact, 
the Mercedes, uh, I, I want to say it was the E, uh, the E class, uh, the, the nice E class, not the S class had not only windshield wipers, but they had spray nozzles for your headlights too. So you could freshen them up. Is that because you go four buying in these a lot and you know, you need to be able to see in the dark. I think there's a pretty good reason why you don't see them on cars anymore. Cause they were pretty much useless. <laughs> yeah. All right. <clears throat> so they ride one of the motorcycles to this random art studio. I don't know what the fuck this place is. Um, and she's like, she calls up Chow and she speaks in Zelchon to him and which Gary Daniels doesn't, uh, he doesn't speak that language. Um, but and, he does. Or, or does, does he? he right? Um, and she's like, yeah, I'll send him your way. And, uh, then she bangs him for way too long, way too long. It's mostly dry humping for the first, like three quarters of the sex scene. Yeah. Yeah, This was just an awkward sex scene because it starts out. She's straddled him and he's got his legs crossed. That's right. That's not a good way for penetration. Yeah. He's like, I don't know about this. Smashing those balls. You're going to need those later. And then they like screw on a table and on the floor, but then take a nap in a bed that was <laughs> right. right <there. laughs> All right. So Mike rides up to this house that's in the hills and he rides rise right past security because they're like motorcycle guy. What? Got to be one of ours. Yeah, he's one of ours. Oh, God damn it. And then the, the black Merc shows up immediately after and uh, whoever's in it starts killing all the guards while Mike's getting through the house. Mike finds Chow just casually glancing out onto the lake from his bedroom where everything's covered in sheets. Yeah. Also, were they guards or were they guard? Right. Because they're like messing with the shrubs uh-huh. the whole time. Every time that one of them gets shot, they're messing with the shrubs. <laughs> yes. Okay. And you know what? He hasn't made it in the world. He might be in this house, right? Mm-hmm. But you have a guy that has to open the gate for everybody. Yeah. You can't even afford an electric gate. That's true. So you're not a top kingpin. Well, he's not selling anything, so he has no money. So what he's got to do, Sam, is his gardeners have to be also guards. They're gardeners uh, because you you can't hire both. I'm not selling anything. Yeah. I, and in fact, I don't even live at this house. That's why everything's covered in sheets. I'm just here to stare at the window and like reflect on things occasionally. Yeah, he seems... And they're not good at either thing, because they're not guarding well, and they're just sort of (laughs) fluffing the shrubs. In truth, if you hired me as a gardener, that's all I would do, because I don't know anything about gardening. I'd just be like, all right, here I am doing it. I'm gardening. (laughs) Yep. Quit molesting the tree. (laughs) Pick up the cat shit. (laughs) I'm new. I don't know what to do. Um, All right, so uh, Jade also comes into the room after Mike finds Chow standing there. And it's revealed that she's the assassin. She's the she's the Merc person. Uh, so I think. But wait, if she's the Merc person, who was the Merc person in the garage? Because she was the one on the goddamn ground. She's got her own fucking henchman <laughs> in reserve. It doesn't, it doesn't make, any, make sense. any sense. No, the people in the parking garage that shot down the motorcyclists uh-huh. were part of the Zel Zelchin Zelchin. Uh, kingpin guys it's it's him but they hired they said don't worry about it i've got somebody who can deal with this it's jade and they're like also let's send in some other guys like it, i mean it just doesn't line up with anything they're like they have to be her they guys. have to be her guys well okay and because the zelchin ain't coming later at the and are like give, give yeah okay all right so this dude Every, everybody's it's a Mexican standoff, but then this dude flies in uh, and kicks the guns out of Jade and Mike's hands. And uh, which I guess she's worthless without a gun, even though she's like the world's most deadly assassin, because uh, then Chow just grabs her and runs to the boat. Well, Chow's pretty serious. Yeah. He's a tough customer, as we've seen mm-hmm. before. He can just snap necks and get dudes in headlocks and make them do anything. Yeah. Uh, so Mike and this other dude fight and, uh, they, he ends up killing him in an arm bar. Like, yeah, he snaps his neck with his legs, but he gets him in the arm mm-hmm. bar by the best flying kick counter I've ever seen where this is Ron Juan. <laughs> he does the flying kick and Gary Daniels punches him right in the bag. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, all right, so Mike, uh, he goes back to the studio to do some shadow boxing. He's like, I got no clue where they go. <laughs> I'm just going to hang out and hope something good happens to me, bald I do. hey 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 by myself. He just does a whole eat shit Jean-Claude Van Damme Yes, he scene. does. <laughs> it's all it is. <laughs> he does the splits. Uh, the, the vein uh, face, you know, the... Uh, Whatever you call that, the JCVD does. And he's got his tiger claws out. Mm-hmm. Meow. Right? Tiger Storm. Um, in walks the head of the Zelchin, and he's like, hey, I need you to take care of this. The enemy of your enemy is your friend, Sung, C- Sung Su bullshit uh, dialogue, blah, blah, blah. If to- we're in a boat yeah. and it starts to storm... You, you you would help me. If it's a tiger storm. Uh, yeah, you would. Uh, and then we'd be enemies later. And he's like, <laughs> he's okay, like, good talk. Bye. He's like, there's two men in a boat. And then and Gary James is like, no, there's only one man in the boat, mate. You're doing <laughs> and it I wrong. I can't find it. <laughs> 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 I mean, he's got to be in that boat there someplace. I'll just keep, I'll just keep rummaging around until I find him. <laughs> can't do it. <laughs> I've tried. <laughs> Okay, um, so that that leads nowhere. He's not like, hey, here's some dudes to help you out or some guns or like whatever. He's just like, we're in a boat together. And when we get out of the boat, we'll be enemies. But right now we're in the boat together. Bye bye. And Gary Daniels is like, the fuck was that all about? <laughs> hey, the right hand helps the left hand. Right. Uh, okay. <laughs> How does that work? <laughs> Is it is the right hand helping the left hand find the man in the boat? I mean, is it like a double team? You use your thumbs and you just rub up and down? Because <laughs> it's still, I can't find that guy. Okay, so um, Victor, meanwhile, is torturing Jade on his big, uh, like, oil tanker that he's got. It's an old cruise ship. Is it an old cruise ship? It looks like it's yeah. an oil tanker from the outside, and then on the inside, it looks like a cruise ship. No, it's got windows all okay. over it. That's all a cruise right. ship. Yeah, and a very crappy one at that. Yeah. yeah. So once again, we're in a shithole. Mm-hmm. How do you buy something like that? Would I like to own a cruise ship? Are they, like, because it doesn't need to go anywhere. It could just be my houseboat. The only thing it needs to do is not sink. And I got a big house. <laughs> Boat. We also forget to mention that when the Zelchan guy leaves, they had already discussed that he had to give him a ride. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess they just hang out in the car while he takes like a 45 minute shower <laughs> and then they drive there together. Uh, okay. Um, so Mike is sneaking up on this boat uh, and then things get really weird in the captain's quarters or whatever you call it where where Chow's got Jade trapped because he gives her apparently some nitrous. They both do nitrous I, and then they it cuddle. It looks like they're smoking opium out of a mask, kind of. I can't tell if it's his new drug or what. I did see the... If it's his new drug, that drug isn't meth. Yeah, but you did see the, uh, but, the hookah pipe behind it. Right. And it's... I did write down exactly the same thing you just said though getting weird in the captain's <laughs> yeah because they start they start cuddling he and you can't hear his dialogue but i'm pretty sure some of it was mommy mommy <laughs> it was weird because they before he like he talks about how they grew up together and that his dad wouldn't let him have sex with her and she's like that's because your dad was banging me when i was a kid yeah. And you're like, oh, God, this is getting fucked up. Hey, Indiana Jones and his dad banged the same lady in the same week. She talks in her sleep. (laughs) She's a Nazi. That's what she dreams about is Nazi shit. (laughs) I'm like, I'm rubbing on top of her and saying, oh, come on, let's get this done, lady. And she's over there rolling to sleep because it's, let's face it, I'm 82 years old. It's not the most uh, exuberant romp she's had recently. <laughs> and she's over there sleeping going, I love Hitler. I love Hitler. <laughs> How did you and not know that, Indy? <laughs> and he has to hand him a pamphlet that says living with herpes. <laughs> oh. 
Uh, Sandy, your balls itch too. <laughs> One in four. <laughs> so Daniels has invaded the boat as a frogman. I guess they had that in the trunk of the Mercedes. Right, right. And he does a scene where he's invading the boat and he like shoots a guy with that guy's friend's gun. <laughs> yeah. And I really wanted him to punch the guy with his own hand and be like, stop punching <laughs> yourself. Stop shooting your friends. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so, yeah, they're, they're shooting out. Um, they, it, it, he eventually dives into the lower decks. Oh, wait. I oh, want to okay. talk about okay. one right. kill okay. in particular that sure. I thought was absolutely h- hilarious. So, you know, he's sh- sh- shooting his friends. And then he guy just kind of goes underneath the staircase and somebody's walking <laughs> down and he grabs their foot and trips them. <laughs> it was like the best ever. It's like, this was so not karate moves. Yeah. Karate by, by grade school. <laughs> this is grade school karate moves. <laughs> I laughed so damn hard when that guy fell. Like, like he kicks one guy. So he's he, like in the tummy. And so is he's, he's out of breath and he's down on his hands and knees doing the who thing and then you push another guy over that guy <laughs> like, ah i tripped you <laughs> it wants a purple nurple <laughs> meanwhile it's getting weirder in the captain's quarters because now he's propped her up and he's making her dance with thought, him like there was a point in time where i was like is he gonna like is she gonna od and she's gonna be dead and he's gonna dance with her dead corpse and like do the mommy mommy thing to her body but she never she never even really like gets that fucked up by these drugs fucked up enough that she can't kill him or fight back and has to get carried by mike at one yeah, but, point like when he comes in she's totally sober and then he's uh, uh, chow's also totally sober like i'm pretty sure this is nitrous because i've done nitrous it wears off pretty goddamn quick but they're all like moopy and <laughs> heroiny. So it's got to be opium. Moopy. And he is fucked up because he decides to throw a Molotov cocktail <laughs> at Mike in a room full of chemicals. So he's not thinking. Yeah, straight. they end up in their the uh, drug lab with it and catch it on fire and uh, starting to burn the boat down pretty good. And they're both brain fried because of all that. Right? product. Like they're never coming no. back from what they inhaled uh-huh. in that room. Uh-huh. Uh, so everything's starting to explode as they fight. They get blown to safety a few times, which ends up them uh, chasing each other back up to the top deck. And somehow, like, they they just keep fighting in normal fighting style. And I can't really tell, but eventually Chow just kind of gives up. He falls down. Uh-huh. I think an explosion knocks him over and he was like, oh, I was too close to that one to look badass. I hurt my knee. Right. So he just lays there and then uh, Mike Ryan is next to him. And they're both like, oh, ow. And Mike Ryan gets up and he just like walks off and Chow's like screaming like Frank. Like I couldn't tell what he was screaming at him. He just kept going Frank. <laughs> Don't leave me here, Frank. My name's not Frank. <laughs> Man, you smoked way too many of your own drugs. <laughs> and so the ship explodes uh, with uh, Chow still on it and Mike jumping off. Into that was the water. a badass jump, though. Oh, it was, that was a good stunt. The explosions were not. No, the explosions were shit. But his jump off the boat, mm-hmm. whoever that was, that yep. was incredibly cool. Like, for a second, I thought, he's going to hit the poop deck. Yeah. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> and then he made it. So he didn't eat shit. <laughs> his last his last words are shuffleboard anyone. <sighs> um okay, so uh, later <clears throat> Jade <laughs> Jade reunites with her daughter that we have no fucking clue about. They had, I guess they had her daughter. Who? The Zelchon. Oh, uh, but why? Because you just work for them right? already. I don't God. They give you henchmen. I mean. And there's no uh she's she's no longer branded. Yeah, she she lost the brand that, that Chow gave her. Aloe vera. <laughs> <laughs> and then Mike uh takes uh John's kid uh rock climbing. Uh they're he's no, his new dad. He takes him shitty yeah, shitty repelling. repelling. I, I I'm your new dad. You remember your old dad? We none of us liked him. 
I mean, he did. Actually, I was your dad this whole time. <laughs> you never knew. Eh, I did it behind your mom, with your behind your butt, dad's back. You, me and your mom. Behind your dad's butt. Yeah, behind your dad's butt. I was shagging your mom. Yeah, my boy. <laughs> I've been this whole time. Aren't you glad? And that's the end of the movie. All right. Questions starting with Jackie. Um, well, does he become the new dad? <laughs> because he, at one point, he's talking to Chow in the house, right? Before that happens. And he's like, I used to do the one night stands, but now I don't. And I'm like, so you got a girlfriend? Mm-hmm. He that uh, he's been uh, waiting around for this to happen. He knows that his best friend is a cop. He's seen him do cop and stuff, and he's not very good at it. And he's gonna get immediately captured at some point and shot. He's just biding his time so he can go back and uh, uh, start shagging shitty Denise Crosby again. He's he's celibate until that day. Well, no, because he screwed no. Jane. Oh, that's a good point. <laughs> And he said he had a girlfriend, too. So I think he's actually everybody's dad. <laughs> he's he's that strange girl that came out of nowhere. New dad for her. New dad for the kid. If there was another kid that just showed up in the movie, like, hey, Gary Daniels is your new dad, he's, too. It's like an Oprah gift he's, show. He's Johnny Kiwi Seed. Uh, is this thing yeah. on? <laughs> oh my god no it just wasn't funny <laughs> okay uh sam is he any worse or better than van damme okay all right so we're just getting straight into that because that's my only question because uh this movie's not worth discussing that much um i'm throwing one in the mix as well uh compare uh his uh his career to dudikoff's because they're the same guy. He's markedly better than Dudikoff because he's an accomplished martial artist. Absolutely. And Dudikoff is That's a surfer right. that his hair is blown up and he just has woe face all the but time. But they're both very similar uh, uh, trajectory as far as their movies, um, except for Dudikoff was in a lot more rad movies. Um, but they both do the exact same method of acting. They don't. <laughs> They, don't. they just have this dumb look on their face the entire time. Whereas JCVD, he'll give it a go. He'll try to act. He's just, you know, JCVD. He's terrible. He's terrible, but he tries. And there is a middle patch of his movies that are actually like, these are kind of quality for action a little bit. Like hard targets. Okay. Gary never got to do anything of the level of production. Yeah. Van Damme had some heavily produced movies there for a while. And Dudikoff had uh, more of a, like, let's get Dudikoff. Let's get Dudikoff. Let's, Gary Daniels had to get these jobs, whereas Dudikoff was just a body that, that uh, the studios would be like, let's just have him do it. Yeah. And that Gary had to do the choreography for most mm -hmm. of his movies. After a certain point, he was a line producer and the choreographer. Which is why I actually like his movies, because you can tell that he's a multidisciplinary martial artist. He mixes grappling. He does a lot of different things. And he's less crappy on screen fighting. Van Damme goes so goddamn slow all the time. Oh, yeah. God. It's painful. And then Dudikoff doesn't even know what no. he's doing. See, and I think that Van Damme, personality-wise, he's funnier. Oh, absolutely. And so that really comes across in his movies. He's got that sense of humor that I, I don't think Kiwi guy. Gary Daniels. Gary Daniels. Uh, I don't I don't think there's a lot going on up there. I don't think there's a lot going on upstairs with Gary Daniels either. But I think there's a lot more going upstairs than there is with Michael Dudikoff. Uh, yeah. But again, Gary Daniels had the worst career out of all three of them. Fist of the North Star was sort of like if that would have that was his make or right. break moment. Had that thing actually done well, he would be a different, a different martial arts star. It didn't, and he's Gary Daniels, but he still worked a lot. Like his his list is long. Yeah. Lately, he hasn't done much, but I, I saw on his Facebook page he's super hippified too. His hair is fucking long. He looks goofy as hell. It's yeah. great. I'm just trying to think of one other than Fist of the North Star. 
uh, one Gary Daniels movie that if you weren't a listener of this podcast, that when somebody says Gary Daniels, you would be like, Bleh. and there's not. There isn't. Uh, he is in that Jackie Chan City Hunter. He's in City Hunter, but it's not a big And City part. Hunter is one of Jackie Chan's least well-known movies. So, yeah. yeah. He was on an episode of V. Gary Daniels was? I'm just making that up. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, right. So, yeah, it's, it's kind of a weird he, career that, that Gary Daniels had and why... Uh, I, I get why uh, JCVD was the bigger deal of all three of them, but why Dudikoff? They, don't get me wrong. I love all three of them. Absolutely love all three of them. But uh, well, why question. Dudikoff yeah. is because he was an underwear model that was in front of Menahem and Golan at yeah, the right time. Right. It's just a... And if people that don't listen to the podcast would know Gary Daniels if they're fans of Cynthia Rothrock, which is a very small group mm-hmm. of people because he's in a shitload yeah. of her movies. And she also likes to do the in your face Van Damme dances in her movies, too. It's true. It's true. All right. Uh, any other questions, guys? Final recommendations. Uh, let's start with Jackie. No. Okay. It was too confusing, and the fighting wasn't very good. The trip thing was the best thing when he tripped somebody as they were coming down the stairs. That was the funniest part of this movie, and it was also the best stunt other than the jump off the boat. Okay. okay. I, I don't know. I just I just couldn't get into it, and I think it was a lot of what the hell is happening and that just kind of shut it down for me. Sammy. I think it's really? a do. I okay. liked it. Uh, I thought it was super stupid, very confusing. And it's like Gary at full force, not acting half the time and just having good hair, <laughs> which is just silly. I also would expand it to say that if I had run into this movie when I was a kid, because I had a large volume of dubbed martial arts movies when I was mm-hmm. growing up. I would just go to the video store and I'd dub them. If I would have run into this, I probably would have watched it repeatedly. Okay. Interesting. And I like that Carrie gets to, you know, go bananas in this movie too because we don't get very much of that. Yeah, uh, Carrie uh, T- Tagawa is, is definitely, in my opinion, the best part of this whole movie, but that's not much of a surprise because pretty much anything he's in, he's the best part of the movie. Um, but as far as a do and a don't, I don't. I, th- I think that this is uh, uh, same as uh, Jungle Ground. It's just common DTV fare. And what why I picked this movie is because I knew the plot was paper thin. But the thing about the paper thin plot is it's just Beverly Hills Cop. What? Partner gets shot. Dude goes on a revenge outside of his jurisdiction. Gets told to go home. Won't go home. Ends up storming the bad guy's headquarters where he lives, killing all his guards that ends in a fight all... I mean, like, it's... Without the comedy, it's just Beverly Hills Cop, and I think they knew that. Um, But... what? Half of his movies are the last Gary Daniels movies we we watched like a year and a half ago was the exact yeah, same. Yeah, maybe thing. all movies are just Beverly Hills Cop, but man, it screams it in this one. Um, and uh, just cliche after cliche goes to the to the lady who you know is working with Chow and that she's the assassin because who else could it be? Um, because in another movie we would have saw the assassin and it would have been Sid Haig or uh, Big Jaw who died. Um, what's his name? See, and I think that you're wrong on that one because there were so many randos that just showed up in this movie. Yeah, but none of them had dialogue. You would have, there would have been a big reveal where the hitman came in carrying a guitar case or some bullshit like that. That didn't happen, so therefore you knew had been one of the people in the in the film who had actual dialogue, and the only person that fit the bill was her. Um, and uh, just just too cliche, too run of the mill. And what I was told was, yeah, it is all that, but the fight sequences and the action sequences are top notch. And then I saw it and I was like, this is bland as shit. You should go watch a fucking Jackie Chan movie, uh, people who have not. And uh, so it's a dump for me. It's a waste of time. That's the thing. You're basically giving a don't to Gary Daniels. Uh, Yeah, man, I'm not because... I like him in a lot of stuff. And I don't think that there was a problem with him in it. It just wasn't enough to be like, yeah, do this. 
again, I've seen most of the movies of this era, and you can't, like, oh, yeah, go watch a Jackie... Of course go watch a Jackie Chan movie or a Sammo Hung or any of the Seven Treasures. They're amazing athletes. The choreography is top-notch. The stunts are dangerous to the point that most stuntmen will never work again after doing those movies. But by comparison of the other shit that's happening, like Perfect Weapon mm-hmm. and anything... that like American Ninja, like the fighting in this versus its peers is much better. It's just, that's how of bad it DTV was in the mid nineties, mid nineties action films. All will give you that except for that Gary Daniels movie that had the ultimate warrior in it. Um, and I'm wearing an ultimate warrior shirt. How about that coincidence? Um, yeah. I thought the fighting was the action sequences were better than that. I just thought that this was bland and drab. Yeah. And he does take over most of the choreography after yeah. this. So maybe they do get better in the fighting in the 2000s or whatever, but uh, this is one of his sort of most clean produced vehicles. Yeah, yeah. not uh, not good, <laughs> Gary Daniels, uh, which makes it uh, one of my least favorite movies. I want to see those unclean vehicles. I like those ones. Um, next week on the podcast, Jackie and I will not be here. Um, Sam, do you have a plan? Uh, Tyler will be here. He hasn't picked a movie okay. yet. All right. So Sam and Tyler next week coming at you. Um, get to the chopper. <laughs> <laughs>